Good morning. Today is Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. In this week's Torah portion of Pinchas, Vayomer Hashem el Moshe, God says to Moshe, perhaps the most deeply disappointing words that Moshe has ever heard, Alei al har ho'avarim hazeh, come to the top of this mountain and you will be allowed to see into the land of Israel from across the Jordan River, but you yourself will not go into it. You, Moshe, though it has been Moshe's lifelong dream and drive, Moshe will not enter the land of Israel. Now, later... We'll read this in the Torah in a few weeks in the Parsha of Eschanan. Moshe will beg God to change his, not, his mind. Eschanan el Hashem. Moshe will plead before God to allow him to go into the land of Israel. To no avail. But that is Moshe's response later. We'll get to that. The immediate response, Moshe's immediate response to hearing this devastating news is in our Parsha, and it follows this verse. Vayidaber Moshe el Hashem Lemor, God says to Moshe, the first response on hearing the perhaps the greatest personal disappointment of his life, Yifkod Hashem elokei haruchos l'chol basar ishal ha'eda, appoint a successor. The people must be led. If it's not going to be me, it has to be someone else. And we've discussed before the example Moshe sets of excellence in leadership that at the moment of perhaps his greatest personal turmoil and disappointment, his immediate reaction is not to think of himself, but to think of his role as a leader and to make sure that there is continuity, to make sure that there is someone new that will be appointed. Later, Moshe will raise his own personal disappointment. But the immediate response is to worry about his people. We've discussed this before. I want to focus this morning on the criteria Moshe suggests to God that should be used in choosing his successor. It should be a person, Moshe tells God, Asher Yetzei Lifnehem, who goes out before them, va'asher yavo nehem, and comes in before them, va'asher yotziyem, and who takes them out, va'asher yiviyem, and who brings them in. So, Number one, what do those two phrases mean? And number two, how does one differ from the other? It seems repetitious. So I want to share with you the approach of Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam was a very famous, one of our classic medieval commentators, one of our classic commentators who lived in Orleans, in our France. And he says that these two phrases are distinct they are actually two elements of leadership. They comprise the two elements of excellent leadership. Asher, let's go out of order. Let's take the second one first. Asher yotzi aim va'asher yivi aim. A leader who will take them out and bring them in. What does that mean? Says Rabbeinu Tam, this refers to the Urim Vitumim, the breastplate that was worn by the Kohen Gadol during the time when the Beis Hamikdash was standing, and this breastplate operated as a sort of type of prophecy, in that questions of national import would be answered. And God's answer would be received via this breastplate. It was the medium through which God's answered, answers would be received. 
In other words, what Moshe is saying to God here is, appoint a leader who will be guided by spiritual and moral teaching and excellence based on authentic Jewish values and teaching. That is the substance of the leadership that this leader should provide. That's the second phrase. The first phrase, Asher Yetze Lifnehem, a leader who will go out before them, Va'asher Yavo Lifnehem, and a leader who will come in before them. What does that mean? And how is that distinct from the other phrase? So let me start with a story that illustrates this. In 1948, one of Israel's bloodiest battles in the War of Independence was at Castel, which is an ancient Roman fort near today's city of Mavaseret Sion. And when you see it, you immediately grasp its military value because it overlooks and therefore controls the main route leading to Jerusalem. In April 1948, Yoram Kaniuk was a soldier in the IDF, and he, along with ten other soldiers, were at the top of Castel. They were trying to hold on to this valuable military place, but they were being attacked. And they were terribly outnumbered. And Yoram was shot in the eye and wounded. Later, he wrote a memoir titled 1948. And he recalls in his memoir that he remembers hearing a call over the radio, we're coming. And 23 men under the command of Nahum Ariely arrived on the scene. And while they were under fire, the message was given over the radio and it was yelled to all of the other soldiers, privates retreat, commanders advance and cover them. And Kaniuk describes the scene that took place at that moment. The officers commanded by Nahum Arieli stood like a human avenue on both sides of the path between charred buildings and amid an inferno of firing. And we, the privates, passed between them as if on our way to the wedding canopy, to the chuppah. The leader leads the nation into war as opposed to sending in the troops. Using the famous battle cry, which is standard in the IDF, Israel's army, and is first attributed to Joshua, Yehoshua, who was the one who was appointed as Moshe's successor, Acharai, after me. So what Moshe is saying to God is appoint a leader who will lead based on spiritual and moral integrity and a leader who leads by their personal example, whose personal example says to his or her people, Acharai, follow not only what I am saying, but follow what I am doing. That, in fact, is the leadership that Moshe exemplified. And that remains the goal of excellent leadership today. 
My friends, I want to wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.